Hello everybody and welcome to Trail Talk. This is uh, leg 11. Uh, this is one of my uh, little favorite sections of the Appalachian Trail that, to this point in time and in fact last in 2016 after I had to get off the trail and uh, get well in October my son and I went up and we we did this this particular section here. So if you might remember from last time we we had we had, we had come off of Rowan Mountain and uh, right up here right Rowan Mountain and you know had come down you end up a little hump big hump and then there's this huge huge descent coming down I rent I wrenched my knee pretty good coming down right before we crossed the border so coming somewhere in here I really hurt myself so by the time we got down uh, into the Elk Park Rowan Mountain area um, I'd heard about uh, about the hospitality here at this particular hostel and the great breakfast. Uh, another hiker said you got to go into town and get a, one of the best hamburgers on the trail will be in there and there was barbecue. Um, I decided to take a zero here and, uh, and nurse my leg and uh, did that. Um, met, met up with Hamfist who was just finishing up his zero and so he left the next day uh, <clears throat> while, I took, while I took my zero. And uh, um, when, when you when you come down and hit the I guess it's 19 yeah US 19 east you you can hike a, you just walk down the road a half a mile to uh, to to the hostel here in Rowan Mountain to the to the uh, Harbor Mountain now warning foot stomp uh, normally you walk with against you would normally walk against the traffic right so you're gonna be on the left side of the road going downhill well there's a huge uh, kind of a a cliff that comes right up to the side of the road and it's a blind corner and you will you will scare the living daylights out of yourself and feel like your life is in threatened but then it'll be too late because now it's a blind corner and you can't cross over to the right side and um you, you'll feel like by the time you get done your your life has passed before your before your eyes like three or four times so i just highly recommend jump to the other side there's a nice shoulder Hike with the traffic down to to Rowan Mountain to the I'm not down actually not to the town you're just going to go to the, to the bed and breakfast here. There's some other there's another uh, bed and breakfast that's in town too. Um, uh, it's, I think it's like Rowan Mountain bed and breakfast. Um, anyway, um, so there's 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 other options besides this, but this is the the best breakfast you're going to get here at, at the, and you can resupply there too. They actually have a little a little, a little store. Which has got enough stuff that you can resupply there, no problem, and then jump back up on the trail and then resupply in Hampton again. Um, all right, so um, now let's see. Just to give you an overview, I think there's a map on the back side here. Yeah. So when you come when you come down, okay, you're coming off the trail. There's that there's that blind corner right there with a cliff on the left side. Uh, see, Sar Harbor Mountain's not that far away. Here's the North Carolina Tennessee line. And then here's Elk Park. Okay, there you can get alcohol in Elk Park. Rowan Mountain is a dry county, so if that's really important for you, what what some people would do is they would they would hitchhike, they would go to Mountain Harbor. You could very easily get a ride into town and a ride back, and then they would hitchhike over to Elk Park. Or sometimes the people that would be hitching taking them back, they'd be nice people there. I mean. Some of the best people in the world are in Tennessee and North Carolina, the friendliest, I'll tell you. And uh, anyway, a lot of times they'll, they'll take you down, get you some some booze, and you can come back. So if that's important to you, um, you need to know that, that uh, you got to go to Elk Park to get the alcohol, okay? Right down to Jay, Jay's Market down there, all right? Okay. So... All right, so now we've we've decided we're going to we're we're done with our with our with our day. We're going to hike back up and get back up to the trailhead, and and this is where there is a sign that says you know don't park here or overnight, your cars will be damaged. Um, so you know leave them down at the Rowan Mountain. There's a little, I mean down at the the Mountain Harbor. There's a maybe a parking lot there. You pay them a couple bucks I think or five dollars and they'll they'll let you park down there. Um, and. Uh, so let's see, we are going to, at this point, uh, begin our, we're going to be making our climb back up again. And uh, there's some, there's Jeep paths that you can be going. So it's actually a pretty, pretty nice hike, nice hike, a good, good width to the paths. Um, and you get up here and somewhere about up in here was, is one of the, one of my lessons learned uh, for hiking. 
and that is turn around and look behind you. Um, it was kind of a rainy, misty day, and it was really nasty, and it was just easy to kind of put your head down and just trudge up the hill. And as I, as I got ready to make a right turn into the woods, I just decided I would look back behind me. And, uh, and I'm going to show you a picture of that, but the picture doesn't do justice to what the eye could actually see. And it was one of those moments where it's like, oh, wow, I'm glad I turned around. And then I, I lived that lesson throughout a lot of my hike. And, and, and oftentimes I would turn around and find myself being followed by a deer or something just down the trail. So uh, always turn around. So anyway, let me show you what that view looks like. Okay, um, there, there's a, you're going to come by and you're going to kind of scoot around the cemetery. Um, and there's this, this church here and you can get water at the church. So if you, if you kind of run a shirt on water, you can get some water out of, out of the spigot. And it tastes to me like it was nice, fresh, you know, good, cold, well water. And it's not, didn't seem like there was a whole lot of, uh, chemicals added to it. So it was a really, really good water, water source there. And, uh, and then begin to, uh, um, if I remember right, this is just a very, very nice, nice walk through here. Okay. And, uh, then you come down and there will be a little sign that says Jones Falls and it's only, it's only a point one off the trail. Um, I would highly recommend going to see it. It's really pretty. If it's the right time of day for you to, to take a lunch or maybe your, your mid morning snack break, depending upon how fast you hike, uh, a great place to do that. Let me show you a picture of that here. Okay, once you once you leave Jones Falls, you're going to continue the, a, a little bit of a descent, and then this area here. Oh my goodness, this was so beautiful. Um, you 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 descended down. You're going to be walking along the uh, the Elk, the Elk River, I think, if I remember right. And um, um, I don't know it's just it's just beautiful walking through here. Okay, very very pretty. There is a campsite uh, where you can camp down here, and then um, you're going to come up and you're going to you're going to you're going to across the base of the falls, and uh, then you're going to come to the mountaineer shelter. And because it was it was it was kind of rainy that day and 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 threatening some more rain, um, I had thought about continuing onto this campsite, uh, but I decided to do it, the, the shelter was just, I mean literally you could see the roof of it from the from the trail. And it's a, it's a large shelter. You can, it's actually, a, there's actually a, a loft that's put, you put two people up on the third level. It's, it's a, it's a very big shelter. Um, the water's not too far away and it's actually at the top of the falls is where you go to, to get your water. And, uh, there's a, there's a few tent campsites up, upstream, but this is one of the places that there was no, no way you could put a, uh, a bear rope up. These trees had no branches until about 150 feet up, and so uh, we kind of left our food hanging on the on the the pegs, not the pegs, but the uh, kind of suspended toggles, if you will, in the, in the in the shelter area that night. And we were all kind of in agreement that we would do that because there just wasn't any place to throw a bear rope at all there. Let me show you a picture of what the falls looks like there at Mountaineer. Okay. Um, Let's see, uh, I forgot to mention, we crossed 400 miles down in this area, down along that footpath, and somebody had taken some sticks and put 400 miles on, uh, on the path. I thought that was kind of neat. Now, once you use gut hooks, you can, you can kind of keep track of that stuff a little bit easier, but I wasn't using gut hooks in 2016 when I did this. Um, let's see, uh, there's some people that had camped, camped down here, and you could see where they had had their camp sites because they were you know the, the tent area where they had put their tent was dry because it, it was raining so i could tell there had been people that had, had camped here as we as we uh, we passed by um you a little thing here this little bench view you almost don't even pay any attention to that and when you come up to it it's like a park bench just sitting there and um when you when you come across these things and maybe the next one you come across is going to be close to the audie murphy memorial um, take a minute and, and uh, smell the roses, if you will. Let me show you a couple of photographs that I took from that bench. And you'll see why it was there.
Okay, that was pretty, wasn't it? And it, it was very spectacular, and uh, it was just as pretty when I when I stopped there with my son in the fall, um, looking at over the the colors of the trees. Um, okay, we're gonna you're gonna come by. Uh, there is a there is a trail to a hostel. Um, don't know much about that as I as I didn't pay much attention to it as we as we came by, and um, this was just a very pretty pretty walk. Uh, hardcore cascades. Um, this is where I was crossing the keg caves and we hit because of all the rain, they were kind of a little more slippery and dangerous. And uh, one of the hikers had their dog off leash and he, he basically ran at me barking and it caused me to kind of stop and freeze. And when I did that, I fell into the cascades and uh, hurt my, hurt my knee again that I had just spent a whole day, um, taking a zero at, uh, at, uh, Mountain Harbor to kind of help help heal, and then it got re hurt. So I was pretty frustrated with them. That's the last time I saw that group of guys. I never saw them again after that. Um, and, and they may have been contemplating uh, getting off. They, there were a couple of guys that were kind of under resourced on the trail, trying to make it work. Okay, um, let's see. Um, good, another good campsite here that I did I did not stay at. Uh, which is coming up right before this, uh, and and probably should have gotten water there because once again, you know, there's usually always water at the shelter, and uh, I'm still le learning lessons the hard way. And uh, when you see something like this, the water source is a long way downhill across from the shelter. When when <laughs> um, he'll often put down here, you know, point one. Point two, point three. I've seen point four. I've seen point five. And when he says a long way down, that's a long way down. Okay. Um, I was kind of out of water, and Smiling Dawn was with me. Um, I met, met, I had met him there, and uh, he was kind of out of water. And there's two young kids, uh, Jake and uh, Jacob and Jake. They're two friends that were hiking together, and. Uh, one of them was going to head down to get some water. I said, "Hey, if you <laughs> if you fill up my my bladder, I'll give you a, a Snickers bar." <laughs> and so he's like, "Sure, you know, give me Snickers bars are worth their weight in gold about this time on the trail." Okay, and uh, so he went actually went down and got my excuse me. He went down and got my water for me. So I really don't know how far it was, but he was gone a long time. He was pretty tired when he got back up, and he felt like he had really earned that Snickers bar. Uh, anyway, so uh, continued down. Um, we we had we had gotten here, and many of us were not planning on stopping that soon. It was probably about three in the afternoon, but there were some really wicked thunderstorms coming, and we managed to get our tents up, get some water, and get get dinner, and then it hit, and it rained and rained and rained all night long. And uh, Smiling Dawn was there with, with me at the spot, as well as Jake and Jacob. We, we stopped there. This is where we stayed. At the time, the Moreland Gap Shelter, the the platform was quite quite damaged and really almost unusable. When I came back with my son in the fall, uh, the maintainers had been out and actually had fixed it and, uh, and rehabbed it. It was actually quite nice. Um... The, uh, so we stayed here that, that night. The next day, um, a lot of this area had been, had been kind of burned. With, uh, it may have been a purposeful burn. And uh, so we kind of, that's kind of my first, second experience hiking on the trail, kind of there's a little bit of burned out area. And, and then you come down, and now you're going to come across uh, this, this trail that will take you to some uh, falls, which I did not go to. So this, this is the, uh, let's see, one, two two falls and a cascade so far, and we've got Laurel Falls coming up. So a lot of falls on this section of the trail. Um, and then down, uh, and then you start kind of start down, and this barn, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna show you a picture of what a barn looks like. I have different, different things in my mind, being from the Midwest, of what a barn is, but this was just a little bit different. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, um, so we're, we're coming down. We've got um, the, the Laurel Fork shelter coming up. Still, still too early to stop for the day. Um, here's, here's a, there's a side trail into Hampton. You've got pond, this pond, uh, pond mountain. 
uh, where there is some there is some campsites just up on the top here, and there was actually a little bit of water. It's, it's it's definitely seasonal since it's up on the top of a mountain. And uh, then you've got the Watauga Lake Shelter. This shelter uh, had been closed for years. It was opened back up in 2016. Um, Strider and Magellan sent me a text saying that they had stayed there and they had been plagued with bears actually coming in their tents, tearing up stuff. And um, so they, they, this, this, the shelter was reclosed for bear activity. So you had to, if you're going to camp, you had to, this is the last campsite here you could go to. Um, because everything else you couldn't you couldn't do beyond like like I don't know it was was it five miles on either side or maybe it was a maybe the five mile corridor or two and a half miles on each side, so this is the last place to go. So Smiling Dawn ended up going here. I ended up um, had I had an interesting experience I want to talk to you about. Um, um, so as as we were coming down uh, through this through this area here, uh, it was about it was about lunchtime. And um, there is a there is some some impromptu campsites, if you will, uh, in this area here. It was nice and flat, kind of following a stream not too too far that we were following. And I, I went over. It was kind of like I said, it was kind of drizzly rain. I took my pack off, um, sat down on sat down on the log, got some of my food out, and you have that that little still small voice. Um, that talks to you sometimes and warns you and it happened to me it said get up and leave I had no idea but I've learned a little I learned to obey that that voice and uh, I thought well maybe there's a rattlesnake here somewhere a copperhead that's gonna bite me so I don't know um, okay, it was kind of stormy maybe a, a big branch was gonna fall down and kill me I have no idea but I listened and I obeyed and I put my food away put my pack back on and kept going I thought well I'll get here to this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the shelter and I will eat my lunch there. Um, now coming, coming, coming by the falls, Laurel Falls is, is actually pretty, pretty cool. Okay. And you gotta be careful. There's a, there is a dangerous whirlpool there. Um, if, 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 if the falls has really got a lot of water coming over, you don't want to get down in that water. Um, pretty, pretty good descent coming down here to, uh, I guess. I guess right around the falls, and uh, and then and then kind of back up. Anyway, it's a, there is a pretty good pretty good climb. It's in this area, a lot of what looks like um, steps, if you will. Um, and uh, let me show you a picture of what the falls look like. Okay, um, so um, somewhere in here, I missed the turn off to the shelter. Just plain old, I missed it, I missed the sign, I missed the trail. Uh, maybe because I, I was thinking a lot about the, the warning that I just had and I was, was pondering on, a, wondering what that was about. And and uh, anyway, I ended up getting down here to the intersection of this side trail to Hampton or the climb up Pond Mountain. And um, so, so it was a late lunch, and I stopped and sat down on a, on, a, on a stump, and I looked to the left, and guess what I saw? I'll show you. Okay, that was my, the second pink lady slipper that I'd found. Uh, if, for those who don't know, uh, lady slipper is an, is an endangered uh, plant species. It is um, protected. It's, a, it's actually an orchid. And uh, so I thought that was pretty cool to sit there and, uh, and, and see that down here. So um, as I was contemplating going up and up and over Pond Mountain and back down again um, and and wrestling with my, my knee a little bit to this campsite, I uh, came across uh, some guys that were out. They had just done a, a, uh, a slack pack okay, up over Pond Mountain and they were staying at this uh, Bremer uh, hostel, castle hostel down, down in Hampton. And they were like, uh, oh yeah, because I was thinking about, well, we got Con 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 Concora, uh, where you can stay at down there. We're going to Bob Peoples' uh, place. You know, Bob Peoples is a, a famous trail maintainer. He's, he's been around forever. He's about 90 now or so. Wife passed away a few years ago. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a hostel there. There's a, a Bear Mountain Resort or something like that. So that's another a hostel. 
And there's a couple more in town. And I really had, I thought I, I thought about getting a resupply. I thought about coming down here and just, and just hitchhiking back into town and get doing a resupply. But, but they, but the idea of doing a, uh, a slack pack was intriguing and found out that you can get a private room for $25 or a, uh, you could take a bunk for 15. I thought that was pretty, 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 uh, pretty inexpensive. So I took the side trail over to the, to the Brown market where you coordinate where the hostel is and then you go over there and you could do the resupply and there's a McDonald's in town. And, and, uh, so I went over there and, uh, found Hamfist there. Hamfist had, uh, he, he had, he had, got, he had done the Pond Mountain version and you can hitchhike really easily here back into back into from here you can go back into into Hampton. Um, this is an easy hitch. So he had, he had done that and was staying the night. I decided to um, to um, go ahead and come in here and take a zero since it was relatively inexpensive and uh, slack pack the next day. So I did that and I, I did I went this direction, kind of came up and then came back down and had a, had a really really beautiful hike that day. It was the, the the weather was was actually cooperating where. Uh, the night that I came in, it was actually raining pretty good, and uh, and if I remember, it was kind of a miserable night here for uh, Smiling Dawn. Okay, and I, I got to, of course I got to see him because um, I I came down here that day and was slack packing back, and he was he was very confused uh, knowing that I was behind him all of a sudden to see hit me in front of him going the other direction. Um, so that was kind of that was kind of an, an amusing moment. Uh, um, and anyway, so that's what I ended up doing. Just to give you kind of an overview of that, what this looks like. Okay, so here you're coming down. Here's here's the first opportunity. Here's here's an opportunity to go to the Black Bear Resort. Okay, or you can go over here to Concora. All right, uh, coming down here, you got Laurel Falls. And you got the Laurel Falls Shelter, which is like I said, I missed it, and so I got down to here. Um, and then this is a really steep climb up going up this direction and this is a very flat walk along the river down here to this parking area so that's what I ended up doing I ended up coming down here walked over to Brown's grocery they they pointed out where the where the, the hostel was and what it looked like went over there um, stayed two nights had the had the caretaker take me down here to the parking and I, I slack packed up over Pond Mountain and back down again then hiked the side trail again back into the hostel for the night and the next day he took all, all of us to include Hamfist down here to the uh the parking area and we by like by Wataga and then we started up all right so that's just kind of an overview of of that um if you take if you come down take the side trail that's about a 30 mile 30 mile hike from uh from Rowan Mountain um Tennessee and the the uh, bed and breakfast there or, or you can add an extra five or so miles, six miles on top of that, make it a 36 mile, and then you can come back into here. And in the fall, um, the, uh, the the Harbor Mountain Hostel folks brought us in and dropped us off here, and my son and I hiked up. We didn't do the Pond Mountain, we just did this, the 30 mile section. So about 10 miles a day, we had to, we had three days to do it, and 10 miles a day made, to make, made, a, made a nice hike for us, but especially since he hadn't hiked for years, and I uh, was coming off uh, an injury, so that kind of worked out well. All right, everybody. Um, so uh, next time, Lake 12, we'll start here at Watauga Lake, and we're heading to Damascus.